Jacob Barrow. I'm Jackie Simon. And I'm Michael Duntra. Now, before we get started, if you want to, wait, let's see a raise of hands. How many freshmen are here? Okay, that's a lot of But anyway, all right, so we're just going to a desk. Everybody here has taken a class in Dr. Lifer or Dr. Glaw, right? Right, Yeah, okay. So let me tell you a little story. So I'm sure everybody has taken Mechanics 1, which is Statics, by either Dr. Glaw or Dr. Lifer. So here's a little story. Suppose we are, it's a Sunday night, it's a nice Sunday night, it's raining, it's pouring, you know, you're working on your status homework that's due the next day, of course everybody starts the day before. And of course, you know, you're suddenly thinking that, um, you know, I need a break, you know, because you know, each engineering problem takes about an hour and a half. So so, you know, so you need a break, right? So you decide to get, you know, let's go get Waterburg. So you guys walk to your car, get in your car, and then drive to Waterburg. Now when you come back, what happens? Your parking spot's gone. How many times has that happened to all? <laughs> How many times has your face looked like that? <laughs> so this is this is the whole motivation for our fund. Uh, so this is our original problems uh, statement. Basically, what we're trying to do is we want to determine the number of available parking spaces in lot Q, Y, and W, and communicate the information to the drivers. So basically, we split this up into two separate problem statements. One is determining the availability of the parking spaces. So here's lot U, it's um, in between the pool and the tennis court. And then we have lot Y, which is in between the football field and Thomas. And then lot W, which is in between Thomas and the tennis court. Um, so then the next part is we want to inform the driver of their availability. So basically, we need to have some sort of display at the entrance and the exit of the parking lot, which is off of ship. So this is a list of all of our objectives. Um, some of our most important objectives, we want to avoid wasting time and gas while looking for a parking spot. And we also need to communicate the information quickly as well as accurately. Um, this is a list of our constraints. Our most important constraints were the budget, which was $12 million, and that was put on us by the engineering department. Also, um, we are not allowed to run new power lines to the um, sign at the entrance and exit. This was put on us by facility services. Basically, it's going to be way too expensive to um, implement a new power source there. <coughs> now let's talk about our refinement design. This is the whole picture of our whole system and how everything comes together. We have three major parts. The first part is the sensor part to the left. Uh, you all collect the data from one image from one charge lot and sent through, through a Reno and Wi-Fi show to go through the main computer. And this is a camera system on the right. The camera will send the image to the main computer and goes through image, image processing. And after the main computer collects the data and image, it will come to a conclusion of how many open spots available in all three lots. Then it will send the number to the LED sign at the entrance. Uh, an exit of show. Then you will convey the, the message to the drivers. Now, one of the challenges that ended up affecting our final design was the Trinity Wi Fi strength at the pool. So, what happened is that the camera is very reliant on the Wi Fi signal. It needs a strong Wi Fi signal in order to keep on projecting images and transferring them to like the computer, our main computer that we have. So in the end, um, even with ITS's help, even when they turned on the signal higher, like we still could not get um, a sufficient Wi-Fi strength at the pool. So in the end, we had to like, cut out a lot of you from our scope. Another issue that we had in the project was we were very reliant on a technology that none of us had used called the Wi-Fi shield. It's an attachment to an Arduino. Unfortunately, with all of the help of all the faculty and staff and other students that we asked, we still could not determine uh, the correct way to code the Wi-Fi shield to properly give us, to properly send and receive the information. We got connection to the Wi-Fi networks, but we never were able to send data correctly. So anyway, we'll just go into the various components of our design. So the first up is that we have the camera, which is in the end used for lot Y. So the idea of the camera is that we're going to place cameras around the parking lot that will take pictures of it um, continuously. And from there, these images will be sent to a computer, which then performs um, image processing to determine how many spots are available. And see so here, this is, an this is our camera. This is the IP wireless camera. We chose it because of its relatively cheap um, price as well as its good resolution and good camera distance. 
And then, yeah, that's the image of one of the uh, parking lots we decided to do. So this is like the automatic interface that we had, that we created that um, automatically takes pictures from the camera and sends it to Mapa. <coughs> so for our test, we decided to place three cameras on top of Lightroom. Room. And as you can see here, there's one right here and two on this table. And, the, and those are three images that come out of these cameras. So what happens is these images get sent to our MATLAB computer, and then which then gets put through this program. As you can see in that picture over there, um, all of the colored squares are, are pre-programmed into it. This is because like, cameras are going to be in a fixed stable position and so are never going to move. And therefore we can approximate where all the spots are going to be. Then from there, MATLAB performs edge detection on it, and then it counts the amount of edges within that square, within each of those squares. Now, if the number of edges um, exceeds a certain threshold, then it counts as, as a car. If it doesn't, then it counts as a free slot. As you can see here, there are two, um, we have two examples. One has two free slots, and the other one has three free slots. There. Okay. Now, I have another question for you guys. First of all, who, ha who here has received an, a stern email from Farzan saying that attendance is mandatory? <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone, right? Well, it's true because we're actually watching our guys. <laughs> we're actually recording everyone who leaves early and we're going to tell Farzana. Okay. okay, so just as I am, so th this camera is currently live. This is currently set up on, on top of like, our room. As you can see, as you can see, yeah, there's like no parking spots available. So what happened is that we, well, we took an image earlier, like as we were walking up the steps pretty much. So it's this image right here. Yep. And so what happens is that we take it, we put it into our program like this, and then we enter. You, you guys all know Matt Lever. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the original image. Oops. Here's the original image. Here's the spots that's come, that it counts. And here's the number of free spots right there. You can see that. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, zero free spots. OK, now we, now. So now we know that zero free spots isn't very interesting, so we decided to use another image. Where this one has, as you can see, three empty spots right here. So we decided to take this image, we'll put it into MATLAB, as usual, then we'll run it. And bam, three free spots. You can see that. Yep, we are very proud of this program. <laughs>
Would your sensor work at night? Yes. Yes. Okay. Same thing. Um, does weather have any impacts on the results of the image processing? No. What we saw, what happened was like we actually tested it today and it started raining, and then that was great because like it did not have any effect. What we also did was we um we wetted the lens as well, like we intentionally I put water on it just to see if it would change anything. But then it pretty much did not change, so it was pretty great. And the camera is not going to cover, so it shouldn't. Yeah, the camera is designed for outdoors. So the camera's right here, by the way, in case you guys didn't know. Yeah. See, it's right there. This is the covering that covers it from the rain as well. Yeah, Zach? Zach?